In De Metropoliet gaan we vandaag praten met Henk Schiefmacher over het Tattoo Museum. It's the hairdo, it's the, maybe the glasses or maybe the jewelry which communicate, but this communicated on top of it. So like I got really interested with it and started to collect stuff. Uh, picked up my first tattoo and uh, and this collection just got slowly out of hand and like I ended up with a house full of like boxes and I, I you know like then it gets to the point where it doesn't grow anymore like all your books there if you just keep that all that knowledge you have there for yourself that doesn't grow anymore so like and as soon as you like open up people bring stuff in not only artifacts but also knowledge little know about uh, things so like i uh, i very quickly sort of decided to do i had to do something with it and uh, we started in the late 80s by having a little permanent exhibition in the tattoo shop and like since 96 they just told me i forget dates since 96 we have this place we have we, we are open to the public and up till now it's been a success i mean like we are the only tattoo museum in the world at this moment uh, there used to be one in san francisco it got like the earthquake took care of the building lyle had to close the place lyle turtle and uh, now we're here and we have 23,000 22,000 visitors a year which is three or four thousand more than the heavily subsidized archaeology museum which you know is also a great museum but like we're doing that we're all right uh, uh, we'll stay there if this is uh, we have a right to st- to be here with that amount of people well tattooing is one of the oldest art forms in the world i think isn't it and you seem to have tattoos from all over the world or tattoo uh, memorabilia and yeah. objects from all over the world yeah. what exactly is the origin of tattooing do we know it is the origin of mankind i mean the tattooing is, uh, is as old as men uh, you know from day one they did stuff to themselves like cutting their hair just to to express himself like from being an animal you know like an animal does not he takes care of his fur but like in 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 terms of a a, a human being he, he will cut his hair or like dye his hair or paint himself up so like the the, the tattoo or the scarification or is is, is is it's all very close it, it happened all very quick and with the migration of man into the world tattoo and traveled along and, and like in certain areas flourished and in other areas disappeared again and then came up again uh, if darwin said there is no people in the world who are not do not know the phenomenon of of tattoo so there is always a bit of tattoo somewhere sometimes big sometimes small sometimes medical sometimes religious sometimes nationalistic sometimes cosmetic uh, uh, there's people who who make amulets in their skin to protect them to like give them stuff to make sure they get to the right place in heaven or to give birth to just men instead of women <laughs> so the the tattooing uh, the tattooing itself uh, is often done in ritualistic settings in many of the tribal areas Today in the world, tattooing has become an incredible phenomena. Yeah, uh, yeah. What would you attribute that to? I, I, I think it has an awful lot to do with uh, uh, the way we live nowadays. I mean, like, when you used to come home, like, all dirty from working in the mines, you know, like, and just jump in the bed next to the old lady, just all black. You know, it's a different world. It's a different industrial world. You know, we do not are there out there in the dark, leave in the dark, arrive back in the dark at home, you know, like all worked out like in the the factory. People working behind computers and the only thing they get is a fucked up little wrist wrist from the mouse there, you know, that's one of the new, uh, 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 instead of your broken back from working. So like, men use makeup, I mean, men use perfume, I I mean like, that was an unthinkable thing 50 years uh, ago. So like, the, there's a big interest in whatever you can do with your body in terms of piercing, in terms of uh, 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 tattooing. I mean, I mean like, just think about 25 years ago, like, if you would go out and buy a pair of shorts, there were two or three 
different shorts you had to choose from two you go to there's there's people who sell underpants just one store 250 different underpants with all kinds of crazy uh, variations so like it is an okay thing to 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 do something with your body at an accepted thing yeah at one point <coughs> excuse me at one point it seemed to be uh, Primarily in the, at least in the Western culture, among the sailors and kind of the bad guys. Now it seems to be even a middle class phenomena. Uh, the middle, yeah, the middle class all, is always careful. You know, like the status quo is always, always a little bit careful because they always think, oh, you know, they're looking at me or like, uh, you know, or they want the same thing like the next door neighbor. But like, it, it always had that adventurous aspect. I always call it an adventurous aspect because the sailors' tradition sort of started came from the pilgrimage, came from the pilgrim tattoos in the, in, in, uh, in the early uh, 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 days of Christianity it, it was you would go to Jerusalem or you would go to Santiago de Compostela and you would come back with a, with a, with a pilgrim tattoo and this was always a proof of a far travel and an adventurous travel which you survived and you did not bring a whole backpack full of all kinds of souvenirs to give to the family because you wouldn't carry that stuff because you had to go walking so like that would be the proof uh, uh, that is also what gives the sailors the tradition and of course the sailors tradition got really big after Captain Cook sort of like re-found tattooing in the Pacific and, and, and gave, gave it the now day name you know, it was the now day name uh, tattoo is, is, is a drum beat and, 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 and the Polynesian word was tatau, and, and Cook named it after. The, he just took the closest English word and used that for, uh, uh, and, and just settled us up with the word tattoo, which is from the Dutch word taptu, which means a, a medieval drum beating who would close the bars, who would close the beer pump, which is called the tap. So, like, well, it's all a Dutch matter. <laughs> so, what was your first tattoo? Uh, I got real serious on my first tattoo, you know, like, oh, you know, this, I gotta be with me for life, and I really gotta think what really fits my personality and that kind of shit. So, like, I came up with, if you think long enough, you will always come up with the, basically, people come up with the same thing, your star sign, astrology. So, I'm Aries, and I do not believe in astrology, but I have my, my Aries here on top of my arm being my first tattoo by a guy called Tattoo Peter who had one leg and in, this was in the 70s and he, he, he was one of my collector friends we would both collect stuff on tattooing I would find a magazine with something on tattooing I would always buy two one for him, one for me he would do the same thing Now one of your books is about your trip to Borneo. Did yeah. you go there primarily to study the tattooing phenomena there? Yeah. Uh, this is a trip. I, I, I collect books on, on, on tattooing and they're not easy to get. Like Especially the older books are very hard and very expensive. And one of the more expensive and very rare books is by a guy called Nieuwenhuis. And he traveled in Borneo in 1896. And he crossed Borneo in three months. He went to what they call the Apokayan, which is the, the, the heart of Borneo, central Borneo. And when I finally found the book, and I bought it for the museum, there was a map in the back of exactly the, his travel. So like as soon as I saw the map, I knew <laughs> I had to do the same thing. You know, like, and the, we basically went to Borneo with a bunch of money and... Uh, Changed it in all these rupias, you know, and, and because of the current, is, you know, you get millions of these things. So like, it all boiled down in two big plastic shopping bags full of full of rupias. In one in each hand, we, we had to go through the jungle to pay everybody a little bit here, a little bit there. And uh, I was there with Anthony Kiedis, the, the red hot chili pepper guy, and uh, we barely survived the whole thing. We barely survived the whole thing. It had, you know, like, it was not in we thought it would be. It, we walked away, I just came straight out of the cafe here in Amsterdam and, and stepped into the, the jungle and we ran into Gange fever, I had 130 leech bites, I had scabies, I had a bladder infection, so like, 
at, the, at, the, at, at one day before we finally hit the other side, he just got so sick that uh, we called in a helicopter and, and, and got him out, and got him into the hospital. And did you find some very interesting tattoos? We found some stuff, although it is it, it is officially that in in the Indonesian part because the Indonesian government does not want people to tattoo. The Indonesian government wants everybody to have a nice gray suit. This was a Suharto government, which is still sort of like in 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 in, in charge. And uh, I mean, like, the only thing they want out of that jungle is the wood, and 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 the, and the oil and the, and the gold or whatever they can find in in there. And uh, so, like very quickly, uh, the Aborigine people are, are out there. Uh, get into big 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 problems and right now I mean like right now they're head hunting again I mean like I was really surprised to see that shit going on on the BBC they're all chasing each other with big mandos they're back again to where they were and maybe I don't know maybe that's good now there are certain cultures around the world that still feature tattoos as one of their dominant things New Zealand seems to have a culture like that uh, what what's the deal there now there is Basically, all these countries had tattoo, and New Zealand had the most beautiful tattoo of all, the moko, the, the facial uh, 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 tattoo. And uh, but right now we're dealing with a revival. You know, like a lot of these people out in the Pacific, all of a sudden realized that they have an own identity, and they're looking for that identity again. Maori is an official study at the uh, university, and people are getting their tattoos again, they're learning their own language again and they get pride in who they are and like they're putting on their tattoos uh, uh, again. Everywhere in the Pacific this is going on at this moment. Tahiti, there's people like getting tattooed again, they, you know, like, basically by getting tattooed in Tahiti you tell them the French, I'm Tahitian, well fuck you, and with your nuclear experimenting uh, uh, in our uh, uh, world, just get the fuck out of here, this is ours. And these people go every Wednesday to the airport and just blow on the whole, on the shells and they're all dressed up traditionally, their hair is done traditionally. It, 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 it became again what it was, a form of communication, a statement of the pride of the tribe of who you are. And here in the West... Because, uh, yeah, we get a little bit of everything, I mean like... Uh, our role is in this moment, for me, I think my role in this moment is like to help them get this stuff back because we have all that information basically here in museums. Uh, or, 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 or because like it very quickly died when the missionaries came there, they just took care of everything. So whatever that is, 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 is in, in sketchings, engravings, and is in British Museum, is in, in, in ethnographic museums. So like the hand I did is... The last time they did a hand like this in Samoa was 10 years ago. This is against arthritis. So like me being afraid that that might go, I just had one of those hands done. I'll, I'll leave the hand in the museum one of these days. When I, when I kick the official bucket here, you know, I'm, I'm gonna leave some of this stuff here. That, that, that's actually the plan. This is part of the museum uh, collection. I actually, years and years ago, was in Florida in the U.S., uh, and the Ripley's, believe it or not, had a tattoo museum, I mean, a, a old tattoos that they had preserved in, yeah, yeah. Uh, between glass. Yeah. Uh, fascinating. And so you're going to have something like that? I have some stuff like that. We got a, an 1850 lower arm, the skin of a lower arm of a sailor. Uh, we even got a, a, a mummified arm, which is two and a half thousand years old, which is a Nazca. You know, it's very hard to, 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 to get that uh, uh, kind of stuff. And of course there's a shitload of people who will come in and try to sell you some pig skin with, with tattoos on there and, and, and claim. So, uh, and there's also no price tag on it. One guy will give it to you and the, the arm I bought for a hundred pounds and uh, uh, the, the, the other piece costed me two thousand pounds. You know, again, the one is only 150 year old, the other one is two and a half thousand years old. So like, there is no price on it, it's just like, do you want it, yes or no? Yeah, I want it. You know, like I'll, I, I think my duty is here now, once I got this thing, it's a non-profit organization, to establish this thing as good as possible, so I can just pull my hands off it. And uh, but yeah, it, 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 we're getting there. It, 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 there is a, well, you're here, I mean, this is already, a, you know, like there's a, the media people, 
There's a lot of media attention, a lot of like newspapers and write-ups and so like next year we're doing this enormous tattoo show of five five days in the harbor just to to give us a boost, just to give us a a nice pile of CIF cash in the fist, which we can <laughs> use to which helps in the steps because right now we're always working at the edge. We're always just about being able to pay the electricity bill, the rent, and we, we, we need a bigger building. We, we got way more than we can uh, uh, show. So, like, uh, that's what we're working on. And then, the, then I can, like, lay down. <laughs> now, you recently returned from the U.S. where you were at a tattooing convention. What yeah. goes on at these things? Uh, in the old days, you would end up in somebody's room and everybody would be doing drugs and, uh, and beer and now we're all sensible so we we'll just sit there drink coffee and talk shit <laughs> and then that's it is it, you see your friends which you know for many many years all at the same time instead of going to visit the guy over at his house uh, you do, but now we're all there together so like for a couple of days and it's all, hey, how's it going? And then, so the first night is really a big exciting thing. The second night already gets a little boring. The third night, it's done because it's, there's still sometimes heavy drinking involved and uh, late, late night. Uh, but it's fun. And people get tattooed a little bit. People show what they did in the year, uh, uh, show you new drawings, sometimes build a new machine. So it's actually what any convention is dentists all together you know they're all like, they're all like but like basically that's what it is they're looking at what you've been doing the last year and just have chats with people uh, speaking of instruments throughout the world there must be different forms or different ways in which people get tattoos or yeah, give tattoos yeah, yeah. could you describe a few that are popular well right now we have the electric the electric machine. This is the electric machine is a little bit over a hundred years old, and uh, so like that's basically what they use in the Western world. The Samoans still use their old tool, which is a boar tusk, uh, which they file down into like a comb of little points, which they put above the skin and they hit it with a mallet, a, a chisel and a mallet, which is a pretty good way as, as long as people hold the skin tight. There is the needle and thread method which which, which was used by the Northern Cree and, and the Eskimo uh, and Inuit uh, I should say and uh, uh, actually you could tattoo with anything with a broken bottle uh, only the result well <laughs> you know I see people getting tattooed with a with a black and decker they took they took the uh, the hex, hex how you call the hacksaw and, and welded needles on it and, and they tattoo this poor soul, son of a bitch with, with this thing and like just like t totally m m mutilated his, his, his up, uh, upper arm and uh, people will take anything to tattoo each other so let me ask you this how many tattoos do you have? 85 I'm waiting for 86 and then it's over. <laughs> I'm 86 myself after that one. No, no, I mean, like, I still have lots of space. I have bigger ones, smaller ones, and they're basically like little collections. Sometimes it's an old time and this guy we could hardly see anymore. This is Danny Skews. This is the Bristol Tattoo Club out of the 50s. And he will make you a member, I think. And so, like, you know, like, this thing, thing is like way out of place, badly done, but a hell of a souvenir. That's, that's sort of how it works. It gets to that point that it doesn't really bother you anymore if you have like a, a nice flower or a butterfly. Or. These are all little memories. Got one of the kids here, an ex-wife, another ex-wife, a new wife, a trip to Russia. You know, this is sort of how New York City, uh, my photography days, another ex-wife. <laughs> so like there is a, it, it, it is a little bit, yeah. Part of life is uh, here. You know how to read it. So what's in the future for you? I don't know. I, I sort of tend to stop with all the ex-wives. <laughs> Anything else, the future is open. 
is, is way open. I hope to get this thing really in the way I want it. I'm working on a new book at this moment, on a, which is an, a, a lection, an A to Z on, 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 on tattooing, which is basically on, 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 on the old traditional type of tattooing with the different types, like the Apiones and like the old Scythians and like, so basically it, it's like an A to Z, but it's in a readable way. I mean, like I, I like to write it so that people start at A because the, the, uh, I like to add a little humor to uh, 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 a little flavor to the whole deal instead of like you know like the, the more scientific uh, uh, part. That way, I, I get away with a bunch of mistakes as well. <laughs> Let me ask you one last question: uh, What kind of people come in and get tattoos? Oh, you, you used to be able to point at a certain group. Nowadays, it's, it's very hard to say, these people will, these people won't. Um, that changes very quickly. I mean, like when, when a guy like Tupac uh, really got popular and being tattooed, a shitload of black people all of a sudden got tattooed. It all depends what, what, what's happening. People need a role model somewhere. After we tattooed Anthony Kiddis, and who, who had a, a Northwest Coast Indian piece on his back, the Northwest Coast Indian tattoos became popular. So, like, it, stuff triggers off in, in different uh, uh, directions by different people. Okay, well, Hank, thank you for that enlightening uh, journey through tattoos. All right. No thank problem. you again. <laughs>
I was uh, I, I thought it was a very uh, uh, different kind of uh, tattoo artist so I went to a shop and uh, I had my first tattoo by Hank